What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes and this is going to be my in-depth analysis and review of our latest Grand Hero Battle Unit, Reeve. And I'll be going over the best builds that you can run on him for different game modes like PvE, Summoner Duels, Arena and Aether Raids. So with that said, let us begin. Reeve is easily one of the best free to play mages that we have got and that is because he has got a really consistent support weapon and he can pack a punch. Usually a lot of the Grand Hero Battle mages are infamous for being red infantry and having low speed and having a gimmicky weapon. But Reeve is an outlier because his support weapon is really consistent and like I said he can also work in combat. So he is a blue infantry mage with Argent Aura as his preferred weapon. This gives him minus one special cooldown and at start of turn he can inflict minus five debuffs to all stats and the stalled status on the foes who have got the lowest speed stat. And this can also be applied to any foes who are going to be within two spaces of those said foes with the lowest speed stat. So this allows you to debuff the opponent extremely extremely hard and at start of combat if foes HP is 75 or above he can get plus 6 attack and resistance during the combat. So we have seen the stalled status before on stall ploy as well as Loki's weapon refine and now it's finally available on a free to play unit. And stall status can basically punish the opponents who have got the effects which can provide them some extra mobility. So here are the skills which can provide you the extra mobility. We've got skills like Armor March, Odd Tempest, Even Tempest, Armor Stride and Armored Boots. You can also get extra mobility out of some of the duo skills and you can actually see these units being used in Summoner Duels, especially Pirate Hinoka. So she is really strong there. And there are also units like Astrid, Annette who can provide you with the extra mobility when they're going to be using a rally skill on you. There's also Legendary Azura of course with Grey Waves but the thing is that if she dances a foe who has got the stalled status it is going to be getting rid of that stalled status and they're still going to be getting the extra movement so that's why I have not mentioned her over here. Now because of this weapon in my opinion Reeve is pretty much the best free to play counter to Legendary Seagard who is a really oppressive unit. And the reason being is that Legendary Seagard gets plus one movement from his special and then if he triggers his special he can also give all of the allies on his team plus one movement. And I can show you with a practical example of how Reef can help you counter Legendary Seagard. So here for example we have got a Legendary Seagard and he's the slowest foe on the opponent's team and that's why he's going to be target of Argent Aura and he's going to be getting affected by stall status as well as the debuffs and also any of the allies of his which are going to be within two spaces of him. So he's in the middle of the team so every one of the opponent's units is going to be getting debuffed and affected by the stall status. Now here we also have Brave Alm who does have extra mobility from his weapon and even though he's not the direct target of Argent Aura he's still affected by the stall status because he's within two spaces of Legendary Seagard. Here it's also important to note that I've isolated Triandra so that Seeger does not move one space and then get danced and get his full movement back. So by using Reeve you can basically shut down Legendary Seeger teams and reduce their threat range so that you can have better aggressive plays and hit and run plays and it just helps you pick off their team much much better. So with this example you can see that how two units who have got extra mobility from their weapon are getting shut down by a free to play unit in Reeve. Here I've got another example of how you can deal with Legendary Seagard teams with Reeve. So it happens that you find a team where Legendary Seagard is not the slowest opponent. Instead they've got Mirabilis and Seros who are much slower than a Legendary Seagard. So the Argent Aura is not going to be targeting him so he's not affected by the stall status or the debuffs. However Mirabilis is going to be the target here and the allies within two spaces of her are affected by stall status. So what happens is that Legendary Seagard can still trigger his special, he's going to be having that movement but even though he doesn't have the stall status, his other allies do. So even if he triggers a special and boosts the movement of the allies, their movement is immediately going to be turned into one movement. So as you can see here, despite triggering his special, Legendary Seagard does not boost up the movement of Legendary Lilina or Selina to reach my team and that is the power of Reeve. So despite Seagard not having the stall status, the other allies on his team are having that status. So he is still going to be losing at the end of the day if he triggers a special because the allies of his are going to be having one movement. So one way or the other you're able to deal with Legendary Seagard teams a lot easily with Reeve on your team. Legendary Seagard is not the only unit that Reeve is useful against. We've got Fallen Edelgard who is extremely slow and she's got Armored Stride so Reeve is going to be shutting her down as well. Same goes for Legendary Edelgard and sometimes in Aetherite's defense we do see Odd Tempest Seros so she's going to be taking the brunt as well. 
Tuma with armored boots is pretty common, and Brave Edelgard of course has the extra movement from her weapon, but keep in mind that she can still teleport, so you're not fully gonna be able to, uh, you know, neutralize her. And then there's also Pyre Tebarn and Normal Tebarn, and because a Flying Beast unit has got the transformation effect of gaining extra movement, they are also a target of Reeve. Mirabilis is also seen sometimes with Odd Tempest in Aether Raid's defense, and of course, Armor March units like Brave Ephraim are also the target. So Reeve, as you can see, is effective on a lot more units than just Legendary Seagird. And there are also some other fast units that he can be effective against, but mostly if they are within two spaces of the slowest ally. So like I showed you in the example, Brave Alm had a lot more speed than Legendary Seagird, but still, he was affected by the stall effect because he was just within two spaces of that foe. Now, in Summoner Duels, people are definitely going to be trying to play smart and make sure that their extra movement unit is away from the slowest opponent. So, there's always going to be that kind of counterplay, but still many times, you're going to be able to get these kinds of units, despite them being fast. So, Yuri is also another example. Odd Tempest units like Fallen and Legendary Dimitri are also the targets. Legendary Dimitri is pretty common in Arena Assault. And even Tempest units like Brave Marth and Dagger, which you may face in Summoner Duels or Arena Assault, are also going to be the target. Just like Mirabilis and Saros, Note is the mythic unit who is sometimes seen with Odd Tempest, so she's gonna be the target. And then we have got all of the other beast units which are not as slow as Tebarn, but they're still beast units. So Reeve is definitely a bad news for these kinds of flying beast units because they get the extra movement when they transform, and if they're getting hit by the stall status, then they just have one movement. Now the thing is that even if Stall is not going to be helpful in a match, he's still providing you with the debuffs which is extremely good. He's providing you with Spectrum debuffs on the opponent and the range is actually quite lenient. Any foe within two spaces of the slowest foe is going to be affected by those debuffs and that makes him a really good ally with units who abuse debuffs like Gantra, Male Morgan or Legendary Lucina. Any of these Plagian units or broadly fan users, they are going to be having a field day along with Reeve and his debuffs. So the consistent debuffs that he provides is really good because he's not checking any kind of stat like Aversa does. And unlike Loki, he doesn't need to be in the cardinal direction to just have the stall effect on the enemy. So it provides him with more flexibility and it also means that he doesn't exactly need a lot of merges to function as a supportive unit because this weapon doesn't really have any kind of stat check to provide you those debuffs. So Reed is a really solid support unit because of this weapon and he's also no slouch when it comes to the combat because he's got base 39 attack which is not too bad and then he has got minus one special cooldown which is kind of rare on mages even more so on a free to play unit so he can have two turn iceberg and have three turn glacies which is really good for high damage and he can also run two turn specials like glimmer ruptured sky moonbow and pre-charge them with time pulse as for his stat spread, he just follows the same route as many of the uh, free-to-play Grand Tour Battle Mages, but still he has got base 39 attack, which like I said, is really nice with this weapon, and his speed is kind of low. The speed super boon, I mean, could be used, but I don't think it's really worth the investment. And then he has got high resistance at 40, which can provide you with some nice glacies and iceberg damage, and his defense is also low. Attack and resistance can help you in combat, but HP is also a very important stat which can help you with some of these supportive skills. For his base kit, he has got attack res ideal at 5 star, and this can be a pretty nice budget skill for any of these slow mages like Reeve himself, and this can also be helpful for foddering off Ashera, who does have tier 4 version of attack res ideal, and she also has lull speed resistance, so you can basically fodder off Reeve for his tier 3 version of the ideal skill, and then inherit the tier 4 version and the lull skill from Ashera at the same time. So that's pretty much his role as a fodder, and then he's got savage blow at 4 star, so if you're really low on Camillas and stuff like that, then he could be used for savage blow as well, so for the most part his fodder is decent, at least he provides something new. So overall, Reeve is a superb free-to-play unit who is extremely useful in different game modes like Summoner Duels, Aether Raid's Offense, as you saw with the footage which I had before, and Arena Assault, and he's extremely good against Legendary Seagard. Anytime you see Legendary Seagard on a map, like for Arena Assault or Aether Raid's Offense, you can just use a Reeve counterpick team and have an easier time. And he can also help you with the consistent minus 5 spectrum debuffs on the enemy. So this can again, like I said, help you with units who like to abuse debuffs. And even if the stall effect is not going to be useful, he at least has another way of providing you with support. 
Investing with Mertes on Reeve means that you can mainly use HP scaling support skills like Sudden Panic and even Pulse Tie much better, so if that's something you want to use with him, then investing into Mertes with Heroic Grills is going to be worth it for you. And even though he's really good for his support, he's also no slouch when it comes to combat, he can definitely hit pretty hard. Now there might be some reasons why people may not want to invest into him. The first thing is that if you're going to be trying to use him on a budget, then he doesn't really need the Mertes to do his support role. His weapon doesn't really have any kind of stat check and he will still provide you with the debuff and the stall utility. And the other reason is that you don't really care about the stall effect that much because you already have units who can deal with legendary secret and such and you have some other invested support units as well like maybe Loki for example who recently got a weapon refine but in my opinion even if you're not going to be investing into him with his merges it still doesn't hurt to have a 5 star copy of Reeve that you can just use every now and again in Aetherate's offense or for arena assault because his counter pick utility and his debuffs and his stall support and you can still make him work with a budget build so personally I'm going to be promoting him to 5 star so that I can use him in arena assault and Aetherate's offense even at unmerge he's going to be providing me with that value and he can be a really fun unit with his support. And I also use units like Broadly Fan Soth and Gantra, so his debuffs are actually really helpful. So let's go on with his build. Like I said, on a budget he can work, so if you just want to run a budget skill, then Attack Res Link from Orochi at 4 star is going to be helpful, just so that he can activate his own slotty skill while also provide some support to your team. You can also use him as a buff bot, which is extremely easy to do on a budget. You can just have the tactic skill and have a link skill, so he can buff all stats of an ally with this kind of build and also provide the support with his weapon. So a budget build like this can be used in Aetherate's offense, in arena assault, and even in summoner duels. Speaking of summoner duels, you can also use him with a bit more investment with even pulse tie and double HP plus 5. Even Pulse Tie is available in the Divine Code section and you can also get that from 4 star Halloween Karth Naga. So I personally use Even Pulse Tie Loki a lot and uh, the value that you get with Even Pulse Tie is really good in Summoner Duels because keep in mind you're going to be facing teams with Secret Maneuver Captain Skill and there are also units like Ascended Fearm with their Precharge Ice Mirror and of course units like Legendary Seagird, Legendary Lelina. Oter, Regan, all of these units with pre-charge special and you can just get rid of their special by using even Pulse Tie. And keep in mind, if uh, someone like Ascended Fearm does not have her Ice Mirror charged up, then she's going to be a lot more vulnerable. So even Pulse Tie gives you tremendous value and I would definitely recommend this. And just one Dragonflower is needed here to increase his HP. And uh, you can run Iceberg if you want to, but Glacius is also a pretty nice special because it's 3 cooldown with his weapon. And even Pulse Tie can also be used in the Light Season. So in the Light Season, whenever Wind Season is coinciding, Legendary Secret is going to be seen quite a lot on the teams. And uh, like I showed you in the footage before, so even Pulse Tie again helps you with Cook and Pulse, uh, Holy Knight, Aura, Legendary Secret, in Ether Raid's offense. You can also stop his movement. So that is really helpful. And you can also face stuff like Legendary Lilina every now and again. So even Pulse Tie has immense value for support. I cannot stress that enough. With Reeve, you're probably going to be using some offensive units with aggressive strategy, maybe Yuri or just some kind of Kanto unit. So Infantry Pulse could be run to maybe pre-charge special of Yuri, maybe have AoE special on Yuri or even run Dagger who can have 4 turn Gale Force with Infantry Pulse. So Infantry Pulse support is really nice with his slotsy as well and we might as well use it because we're going to be increasing his HP. And Panic Plug could be run in Sacred Seal but if you want to increase his HP then HP plus 5 Sacred Seal is also an option. So you just pack a lot of support with this kind of build with even Pulse Tie, Infantry Pulse and Panic Ploy and of course his weapon. Now if you want to invest heavily into him with merges and stuff then Sudden Panic becomes a much better option uh, because it scales off based on his HP. So you can just debuff the opponent and also inflict Panic status on them as well as the stall status so this is completely going to be ruining a team if they depend a lot on visible buffs. And every now and again I do face teams in Vault of Heaven which have tactic skills, all of the visible buffs and of course there is going to be Note with Attack Speed Menace. So you're going to be really annoying her with this Panic effect and all of the debuffs. And with higher investment you can also run a Glacies nuke build for summoner duels. So if you have the secret maneuver captain skill then you can utilize Glacies which is 3 turn special with his weapon and then time pulse brings it down to 2 cooldown. So on turn 2 he's going to be having a pre-charged Glacies which is going to be hurting quite a lot with his attack stat as well as his resistance. So not only he's going to be providing you support against legendary seekers and stuff like that and he's not going to be a complete dead weight in my opinion. So you can get a lot of value out of his minus one special cooldown weapon with secret maneuver and even if Glacius is not pre-charged at turn one, 
he's still gonna be discouraging any kind of interactions with them because he will have one turn glacies so he will be able to retaliate back with that special if a range unit attacks him Attacker's Unity is a really good slot of skill for him because attack and resistance are pretty much two of his main stats and lull attack resistance is also really nice for shutting down any kind of visible buffs. So overall a pretty nice build which is strong and also supportive. And if you want to have sudden panic in uh, summoner duels then that's also an option. And you can have a pre-charge special with time pulse. So this is assuming that you're not running the secret maneuver captain skill and you're running some other captain skill so even then he can provide you with some player phase power with this pre-charge special sudden panic is also going to be really annoying for opponents in summoner duels and you can actually have plus hp iv on him just to make it so that you can have better sudden panic utility so that's always an option at higher investment and if you want to use him in in-game content then you can just run a double life and death build now even though he does have good resistance, double life and death is still needed for running an AoE build because AoE specials do work based on your visible attack stat and uh, Reeve's attack stat is actually not that bad. The unfortunate part of this build is that in his weapon he has got the secondary condition which is based on opponent's HP. So you're gonna be just reducing the enemy's HP rapidly with this kind of AoE special. So you're not gonna be able to get plus 5 attack and resistance during the combat but still this is another way of using the minus 1 special cooldown in his weapon so you can just loop the AoE specials with special spiral and still be a really nice unit with like 3 dancers to clear a lot of the abyssal content as well as the in-game content. And if you just want to build him up for tanking purpose, then you can just run Mirror Stance 3, which is going to be helping you with the guard effect. And Glacius becomes a 3 turn special, so if the opponent double attacks him, then on his follow up attack with Crooked Post, he's going to be able to nuke them really hard with Glacius. So that's an option. Reeve is also extremely good in Arena, and in my opinion, he's easily one of the best free to play mages for receiving P Duel Infantry 4 because how much of an easier time he can provide you with against Legendary Seagard. So, win season is going to be his home because anytime you see Legendary Seagard, Reeve is going to be making that map easier. But you still have to watch out for the dancers on that team because they can just refresh someone like Legendary Seagard, and again, he'll have plus one movement. And you also have to watch out for Harsh Command Plus, which can also ruin all of the debuffs that Reef can provide you with. So you can run Defense Res Ruse from the Divine Code section. And even though the debuffs are kind of redundant because you can already get the debuffs from his weapon, we're still going to be using this for the guard utility. And maybe if the opponent's units are scattered and they're not getting all hit by the debuffs, then this kind of Ruse skill can definitely help you with the long range support. We also got Infantry Hexblade with a Hubert Ephemera Manual. So Infantry Hexblade is also a really good combo with this kind of Ruse skill. And because he's a mage, he can always open up the usage of Sorcery Blade or Infantry Hexblade like in this build so that your infantry allies can actually have adaptive damage. And that can definitely make many of the matchups a lot easier when the opponent has got higher defense but lower resistance. So extremely good option for Slotzy and it's also quite underrated in my opinion. And then if you want to use him more for his combat, then he can be used with a blue flame lull attack resistance build. So visible buffs are going to be really common in arena and Reeve's combat is also not that bad. So you can definitely have the lull skill and he can run quick repose because he's pretty slow. So you will need that to double in the enemy phase and blue flame can easily be triggered in a single round of combat. So he can be used like a mage tank for baiting out stuff like maybe New York Peony or dual lift, all of these kinds of mages. So he can be used with as high resistance. He can also be used with Time Pulse for having a pre-charged Ruptured Sky. So this can give you some nice power in the player phase. And you can also run Attack Defense Form just to boost up his attack. And also his defense which is definitely lacking compared to his resistance. So that is going to be my Reeve review. And make sure to share this video with your friends. Because it's not often that we get such a good free to play unit. And it definitely went over a lot of builds and a lot of examples in my footage. And if you enjoyed this video then make sure to leave a like and a comment. Helps you tremendously. And if you really really enjoyed you could always support me directly. By using super thanks or by becoming a YouTube member. And for more Fae Analysis videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as Legendary Seagirds movement against Reeve. So with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.